Okay, let's have a look at this example uh, here. Um, once again, what we're going to try to find um, really is the apparent power, uh, the reactive power, and the real power. All right, so look, let me just talk about this current here. Uh, I'm going to call this current IS. All right, so how do we do this? Well, look, let's go ahead and find the total impedance that this uh, signal source over here is actually seeing. Now, we're expressing our impedances in this way. So this little block here, it's 2 minus J1. Uh, this little block here is 1 plus J5. All right, so we're going to find ZT, the total impedance. Well, that is what? That is a 2 minus J1 plus this guy over here, so that's a plus 1 plus a J5. All right, so we're going to add the real bits, we're going to add the imaginary bits together. So what do we get? Well, we get uh, 3, and then we've got uh, a minus 1J, a plus 5J, so this gives us, what, a plus J4. Okay, now that's in rectangular form. So let's convert that now to its polar form, and so we can say ZT is really equal to, and if you do this, please, this is actually 5, at an angle of 53.1 degrees. All right, found the total impedance, that's looking in here. We're now really in a position to find IS. And so we can say that the current IS is really equal to our voltage over here, which is what? And now I'm using RMS values here, so that's a 60 RMS value. So that's 60 at an angle 20, and this is divided by the ZT, which is 5, at an angle of 53.1. All right? So if we actually work this out, we have 12, and my angle here is going to be a minus 33.1. Okay. So I'm pretty close to really finding the apparent power, aren't I? I know the voltage here, I know the current here, and so I really could say that the apparent power, S, is going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to that voltage, which is a 60 at an angle of 20, and it's what? It's multiplied by the IS, but it's the complex conjugate of IS, so that we get the angles right. Okay, and so that is really equal to a 60 at an angle of 20, and that's multiplied by 12, and the angle over here is going to be what? It's going to be a plus 33.1. All right? So this is then equal to, so working this out, this would be equal to 720, and these are what? Volt amps, that's the unit, and the angle over here is the 53.1. Look, let's, before we leave this page, let's just kind of look at those angles for a moment. Um, and I'll draw this up here. So if I look at this, I can look at my voltage over here, and I can say my voltage, there it is, V, has an angle of what? 20 degrees. And then my current over here, I of S, well, that's at an angle of what? at a minus 33.1 uh, degrees, so that's I of S. Now remember, the angle we're interested in is the angle relationship between this voltage and this current, and that's really why we had to take the complex conjugate over here so that we get the right angle here of 53 degrees. So really from here to here is that 53.1 degrees. Okay, so now let's go ahead and construct the power triangle. All right, and so what do we have here? Well, we have S. Um, let's uh, look at S. That's S. Um, our angle here is what? That's the 53.1. I'll just draw it like this. this. Um, the real power is here, which we're going to call P, and then this would represent the what? The reactive power, which we're going to call Q. All right? 
So how do we work out these two? Well, look, we know S, we know that angle, okay, so it's a simple right angle triangle. And as we've done before, we can actually say that P, the real power, is 720 multiplied by the cosine of that angle, 53.1, which is equal to 432 watts. The reactive power Q, well, that is going to be equal to the 720 sine of that angle, 53.1, which is equal to 576 volt amps reactive. Just something else to note over here, um, power factor, so I could write that down. Of course, my power factor is really equal to what? It's really equal to the cosine of that angle, which is the 53.1, okay? Now, because the real power lags the apparent power, we actually call this a lagging power factor. And of course, a lagging power factor implies that the circuit is really what? Inductive. All right. Look, also note here, I mean, this is really the previous problem where I've just simply what, I've added up basically the real part and the imaginary part of the impedance. And so that's really our total impedance in a, in what, a rectangular form. Um, as we showed this before, there's my voltage uh, at an angle of 20. There's my current IS at an angle of minus uh, 33.1. And another way to look at leading and lagging, we could say if the current basically lags the voltage, we say it's got a lagging power factor. And we also note that the circuit is inductive. And remember that little uh, jingle I left you, civil, not jingle, but that little um, acronym, is, if you like, that civil. And I said in an inductor, we could say that the voltage leads the current or the current lags the voltage the circuit is going to be inductive. Okay, it's just another way to look at that. We could also kind of work out the, really the true power, real power, and the reactive power, knowing the current, and basically knowing, as it were, the real part of the impedance and the imaginary part or reactive part of the impedance. And so we could say that the true power or real power is going to be what? It's going to be really the uh, IS magnitude of that squared multiplied by what? Multiplied by 3. And if we do that, that gives us the same thing. That's the 432 watts. And uh, we could say that the reactive power, once again, is really this um, IS squared. Now it's multiplied by the magnitude of the impedance um, the reactive part of that impedance, which is what? Which is really just a 4, and that equals my 576 volt amps reactive. And you'll see that that's the same as really what we had before. Mm -hmm.